Well, here we go again, episode, I think it's five now. Welcome, we're back at the Viking Shelter. Dustin's been cooking up, he's been cooking up a storm back there. He's already tucked in. I appreciate you guys have been waiting for the roof. It is coming. The reason why we're not doing the roof until last minute is because we're allowing all this lovely light to come in so that we can make a good enough film inside the shelter once that roof is on. It's all gonna get very dark in there and it won't be as good for the filming. So it just gives you an idea of what the shelter looks like as well you know, the inside of the shelter once there's no roof. I've been working with Dustin on the beds, the raised beds, the Viking style raised beds, uh, splitting up some logs, we'll go through that in a minute. And Dad has been working on a little log store somewhere around here, over in the corner there, which he'll go through in a minute. But we need to, we need to go and discuss this food because it is so, so good. Welcome back. Once again, we're having a nice feast in the woods. As you can see, we've got potatoes, we've got some steak, some sausages, onions, some dip, and some salads as well. Your Viking sandwich. Viking style sandwich. Traditional Viking sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> some, some spinach leaves as well. Viking sandwich. That is it. Viking sandwich. Thank you very much. You can always cook in the fat that it gives off. I've done that before. Where it's just so fatty. You just cook it. Mm. Mm. What about the bench? Okay, so my target for the day helping the lads out here was really to give them some backup firewood. So I bought my log splitting axe with me, used a silky saw, which is really good, and got a load of logs. There's no question of that, but I want to split them down and a lot of them peel the bark off because if you peel the bark off, I just feel they're dry better. What I've done to keep the rain off a bit is I've built this framework just to go over the top of it. Now this is just a temporary log store, a temporary Viking log store, this one. Um, it's got the framework there and I just split some bark off of the trees. I just laid it down here, rested this big piece on there just to stop it blowing off. And if any vertical rain comes down, it just keep it a bit dry, won't it? Look, if the rain dries in here, you've got no problems, but I'm sure the guys will be making a bigger log store. Well, we're running out of daylight for this, uh, this week's episode. Doesn't mean that it's gonna be finished. I'm actually gonna come back here tomorrow. We've got loads to do. We're gonna try and strip some more bark for the roof. I will show you the raised bed that I'm gonna be making and actually explain to you how I've made it. It's a nice, simple structure, but sadly we are losing light and we don't really wanna film into the dark. So keep watching. Hopefully the next scene is gonna be us working again here tomorrow.
Right, so it's the next day. I finished pretty much making the raised bed, although it still needs lots of leveling out. There's quite a bit of work still to do with that, actually. Still not sure what to do with the legs on that, whether to bury them in the clay maybe, and then put the dowels on top, put the bed on top and the dowels in. Uh, but it's at the moment, that is a kind of luxury situation to be in. We need to start thinking about the roof. The bed's in there. We've used as much light as possible to get that bed done. But now is the big job, which is the roof. So we've got some cross members which we just put in, almost like purlins really. Uh, we've got some rafters which we've cut up, we've carried in uh, from nearby, much smaller pieces of cedar for the rafters. And hopefully they're gonna go straight down to the ground as well in that A-frame fashion. Um, <clears throat> and that way it all is uh, in a line for when we put the bark on. The biggest job now is the bark. And it's, a, it's not so much a, a laborious job, it's just very it's sort of time consuming. It's not physically demanding in that sense. It's actually a very therapeutic and satisfying thing to do. Uh, but all we're doing really is these pieces of cedar have been down for a while now. Uh, what we found is that the, the greener the wood, the harder it is to get the bark off the cedar. It's just much, you know, it's, it's, it's obviously still partially living, so it's sticking to the, to the tree much more. Um, we didn't fell these trees, by the way. They have already been felled for to use for wood, firewood and things like that by the, the landowner. So we haven't done any cutting down of uh, the trees ourselves. But what we're doing is just utilizing the bark and on the older trees like this, uh, where that bark is starting to, well, that tree is, is dying really, essentially dead. The bark peels away much easier. But as I'm doing this, you can see some bugs. You can start to see some uh, wood lice and things like that in here, which, which is obviously why you should traditionally strip bark off of logs if you're building log cabin style structures or just any kind of structure with with timber really so essentially wherever there's a knot like this where there was a branch protruding through the bark that's inevitably going to leave a hole in the bark a bit like this here you can see where my finger comes in you can't really get around that because that branch is already 
coming through like this, even if you chop it off like I did with the axe and pull the bark off, there's still always going to be this hole. So yes, we will have slight holes around the shelter, but we will fill these either with other pieces of bark over the top or perhaps with some clay. We're not sure yet, but we will be filling these holes over. Otherwise, this shelter is going to be like a sieve. So that's what happens when you start to push the bark over the knot. But I don't know if you can see this. If I, I just use my fingers, really. There's wood lice in here, loads of baby wood lice. Bigger ones as well, if I can find them. There is a tiny, tiny wood louse just there. Uh, typical, he's not moving, but he, that's what's in, inside all the bark, and that's what's moving around in the bark. These little fellas here, these little bits of bugs, these are, these are the things that are eating away at the tree. And if you leave the bark on, this is what rots away your bark, essentially this and the moisture that's kept in the bark itself. So, yeah, that's what we're doing. We're ripping away bark today. Once the bark's been peeled, Gently move it off, store it in a pile, just to the side, ready to be stripped again, to be put up on the shelter. And once I'm done, simple case of just rolling the neck, rolling the log over, and then getting the next one up. There we go. Any major notches, not sorry, like that, just trim the tips of it, means that less room to slide, slide it off, the bark off of it. Again, it's all pretty much a good height to be using the axe. Then I use my knife and I strip a long line down the bark just to create that initial split. There's my initial split with the knife. And then it's just a case of getting in and peeling away. Now, I can already tell this is a bit greener. So this might even, not even be a decent tree to use. But once you get your finger under there like that, there's the gap, peel it a bit. Like I say, it's all about feeling it with your finger, just where the split is, just working it, sometimes with your knife, around the knots, the knots are the hard bits, so there we go. Good old cedar bark. Awesome stuff. It's going to be our shingles.
this is the structure what we've got so far we've put in a couple of cross members which i did with dustin earlier we've notched those we've now put in the rafters i think we've got about 10 did we say dustin 10 maybe 11 rafters all the way along yeah. Pro side, yeah. yeah probably about 10 or 11 rafters each side and essentially that's what the bark is going to go up against now we are using nails so this is not strictly pure bushcraft or anything like that but the vikings had iron they had axes they had tools they forged from bog iron i believe they actually built some of their structures near bogs so that they could use bog iron so they could make bog iron essentially uh, and make their tools and their nails and everything like that so they definitely did have some form of nail so we're going to use we are using nails just on the top to secure the rafters in up there and probably down at the bottom of the rafters which we're, which are going to butt up against the uh, those big logs at the bottom uh, that's purely because obviously when it's windy out which it will come it will come through this woodland it just makes the structure a lot more sturdy a lot more rigid and it obviously makes it last a bit longer we could get the or the uh, bit and brace out drill some holes put some wood pegs in it would have taken a very long time to do all 20 odd rafters on it on the whole structure it would have taken a long time and you guys would have probably got bored of seeing that but that's what it's starting to look like now let me show you from the front just so you can see now you can see it's starting to look a bit like a house the structure of the house it looks narrower obviously where the rafters have enclosed that space in but you can imagine the roof the bark roof on there we've got the fire pit in here two benches either side the raised bed over there which i'm still working on it's not finished but you can see that I basically used some dowels here, some little dowels there, wood dowels, they went through these planks which we split straight from cedar. So usually you would mill these with, with I guess a mill or a, or a chainsaw mill or a milling machine. But this is done all with an axe and some wedges which uh, myself and Dustin made. And it, let me tell you, it takes a long time. And obviously you don't get it so even and flush. You've got lots of splintery bits which we've still got to clean up. But we wouldn't be sleeping directly on top of this. We would be sleeping on some spruce boughs with deer skins and sheep skins and stuff on top of those so we're not going to be directly on the wood so as long as it's relatively flat that's all that matters there's the uh the auger that i've been using we're going to do a whole video on tools at some point but those dowels basically go down into this cross brace here this cross support and into the legs here now the issue i have obviously is that normally if you were doing this type of um joinery i guess almost like ikea furniture you would have some glue you'd have some wood glue and that dowel would then stick into this uh, leg there that's not the case at the moment so if i lift this up yeah it will pinch a bit but it will probably also pop out so what we're thinking of doing is maybe burying these legs into the ground a bit to give that to lower that bed to give you more headroom but also just to allow you know that that whole structure to be a little bit more rigid so it's got a lot of leveling up to do yet let me know your ideas and thoughts on that one guys what you would do in that situation there that's it so far but it is comfy flat it's pretty stable and to lie on it's pretty it's pretty damn good dust i caught a busted dust in having a sleep on this earlier and he uh, <laughs> had a cup of tea and a sleep but i'm telling you now this is pretty comfortable i like this um, so this is this is exactly the reason why we left the roof off so that you could see us build these structures but now we are getting towards that stage of putting the roof on which is a big big video and let me show you what we've got the pit's still going well a couple of cracks in it but we've had some teas today haven't we dustin we've had, certainly had a few teas today <laughs> and actually look at the headroom so dustin's sitting on that bench we were quite surprised there's still loads of headroom so you can sit nice and upright plenty of headroom we've got bed over there maybe another bed over there another bench down here oh it's going to be uh, it's going to be a good table, a table at the back there maybe in the middle yeah maybe some sort of folding table that lifts up with legs that pull out or yeah that'd be good actually some easy yeah. storage table that that gives us room but then gives us a table when we want it without but, having a permanent yeah. fixed table that's there. a good idea we've got this cast iron those of you who watch tea outdoors remember this kind of tree ring thing that you see in parks we found one of these cast iron things in the wood years ago dad's brought it over here We've got some reed bar into the side there and we can also cook and grill on that or whatever. The pit's so big, it's so it handy, is, we can is. do all sorts. We've got the pot hanger set up now as well. It's just brilliant. It's really, really coming along. This is Dad's log store, which he filmed earlier. It's only a very temporary small log store. We're going to build a proper one at some point. But this is starting to look like home. It really is looking like it's a little home. It's like home as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Overnighters will be coming soon. This, people, is the bark collection so far. Let me tell you, it's probably one of the most time-consuming things you could ever do. Bark collection is not easy, and it gives you full respect 
to the people of yesteryear, our ancestors who actually used this for shelters and harvested bark for shelters and even native tribes today who are out there every day doing this sort of thing. It is oh, it's so time consuming. So full respect to those guys for building their homes from this material. But we're learning a lot along the way. As we said, it's a very rudimentary, it's a very basic structure. We're learning a hell of a lot with these rafters as well. We've burnt the bottoms, again, the, the ends of the logs, just like we did with the A-frame, just to try and preserve it that little bit much, that little bit more. But um, yeah, we're having an absolute blast. We are gonna be, I know we've done a few little cooking segments in each video, but we are gonna be cooking up a monster feast when we actually have the grand opening of the Viking house. Maybe a spit roast, full spit roast pig or some full animal, lots of meat and things like that. Maybe something crazy like a goat. Oh yeah, that would be good actually. Yeah, maybe we, it's gonna be good. So make sure you're subscribed because we've got a couple more episodes. The bark's gonna be a huge one going on the roof. We've got, we're gonna be doing overnighters, some awesome cooking stuff. Yeah, subscribe to Dustin, Bushcraft Tools. He's done a behind the scenes video of this episode and some previous episodes. And also my dad, who's been helping. He's from TA Fishing YouTube channel. Go and check out TA Fishing. He has done a whole behind the scenes of this whole episode today and yesterday, and he's done a lot of work with it. So be sure to go and check that out. I'll put links to Dustin's channel and dad's channel in the description below. Thank you so much. We're having a blast. Thank you to everyone who's new to the channel and has been following us on this Viking adventure. I really appreciate it. Stick around and I'll see you in the next episode.